I got involved in politics like most women do because of an issue that happened within my family. One day uh, I was looking to change a law. I had a family member that was molested and I had to go out and talk to people about this very personal issue to make real significant changes on what is now called Megan's Law. And when I went up to Hartford they said there is absolutely no way you are going to make this change. You will never get the Judiciary Committee to change what's going on here. No one will ever make a registry of sex offenders and you will never make it a felony to molest a child. And they were wrong. And I did that with a small group of women and men out of Groton with an organization called Child Citizens Helping Institute Legal Deterrence. So I said, woohoo! <laughs> we were successful at this and it was a big deal. of that family member and that I was going to make sure that nobody else had to go through what we did with an ineffective police department, an ineffective judiciary system, and, uh, and no supports for children uh, that were molested. So then I said, now what? Well, I met Joanne through the department. Of, uh, I started a union for supervisors. Easy, easy to say, not necessarily easy to do. I fought a state agency. I had to change a state law. I was threatened by the security division. Uh, I was uh, up at the Capitol saying I couldn't speak on my own time, on my own dime, in civilian clothes, <laughs> saying I could not testify for this. I testified, and I was successful at getting it through. I um, passed that state law, uh, organized, a, a non-traditional um, environment. I was a woman in the Department of Correction. I worked at uh, both male and female facilities. And I was able to uh, get 95% of the people to sign uh, uh, cards in, uh, in order to organize. We were the first union ever to be accepted voluntarily in the state of Connecticut. Then I, uh, then I went through arbitration and I added another 200 workers on to the negotiations after that with a different ranking structure. And um, I brought them in into the fold and we had, um, uh, we had at that moment, um, we had changed state government for the better and improved the working lives of the men and women in the Department of Correction. I wasn't through there. I had women come to me and say they were being sexually harassed in the Department of Correction. I organized uh, 80 women to go in uh, to a public hearing up in the uh, state legislature with the help of my predecessor, Edith Prague, and uh, faced uh, the commissioner. Uh, I went to CHRO, and we or, um, organized through CHRO. Uh, uh, the draft of the report that came out from CHRO said the Department of Correction was guilty of pervasive sexual harassment, in particular their commissioner. That report came out, and two hours later, the commissioner resigned. That was a win. That made that working environment better for people, and it better for women in the Department of Correction, and it had made it better for women from that day to this day, and I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Yeah.